So returning to this idea of conjugates, we talked a little bit about that yesterday and some properties of conjugates, but let's talk a bit more now we know about modulus and argument. So the modulus of z must always be the same as its conjugates, because it's a reflection in the x-axis, so the distance to the origin of both of them, or the length of those vectors, must be the same. It's just that one's reflected below, but they're still going to have the same length. Whereas the arguments will be the negative of each other, because one will be going up, one will be going down. Back to this wonderful expression, because now I can call it something neater. Z times Z conjugate, which is X squared plus Y squared, but now I can say, ah, that's the modulus of Z squared. So Z times Z conjugate will always give you the modulus Z squared, which means now when I'm talking about a reciprocal of complex number, that becomes very easy to talk about now because I can simply say, oh, it's the conjugate over the modulus squared. So the rules with the uh, conjugates, which we, I think we looked at these before. So adding, whether you find the conjugates first or second, doesn't matter. Same with multiplication. Same with division. You'll notice I didn't bother with subtraction because at the end of the day, subtraction really is addition. It's just you're adding the negative. And there's the one I was just talking about, the reciprocal. So it's now known as the conjugate over the modulus squared. Just got this one example here. I think there's a similar example in the textbook. Uh, not sure. Certainly in what I'm going to set you, there's certainly similar. But there's a quick way of doing this sort of question using conjugates. So if x plus iy is this square of this wonderful expression, show that x squared plus y squared is 2. Now the temptation of course is to square both sides, play around with it and somehow come up with this expression. But it's easier to do this. So x plus iy is the square root of that. Yes I'll square it but I'm not actually going to square the x plus iy squared. I'm just going to leave it like that because what I'm now going to say is well that means the conjugate must be equal as well. So the conjugate of x plus iy squared must be the conjugate of 6 plus 2i on 3 minus i, which I know division, I could do it individually, so I'll rewrite that. And therefore, the conjugate of x plus iy squared must be x minus iy squared. Right? Think it through, you've got conjugate of x plus iy squared, so what you've really got is conjugate of x plus iy times the conjugate of x plus iy. But our rule said we could find the conjugate of each individual bit first if we wanted to. So it'll be x minus iy times x minus iy, we get x minus iy squared. Now, if I combine these two things together, I get x plus iy squared times x minus iy squared. Are these two things multiplied together? Well, hang on, they're all conjugates now. Squaring, well, that's going to be x squared plus y squared. Difference of two squares, which in this case will be sum of two squares because we've got a number of times it's conjugate, so x squared plus y squared squared. On the right-hand side, look at my fractions, they're conjugates as well. Sum of two squares, I get four, but that's x squared plus y squared squared. We want x squared plus y squared. Got to be two. I know it can't be negative two, because, well, it's got to be a positive number, because x and y are real numbers, so I can't square them and get a negative. So x plus y squared is equal to two. A much quicker way of doing that than trying to go back and creating simultaneous equations and all sorts of wonderful things. Okay, told you that.